Here we're going to be dealing with exponential equations that involve factorizing. And the way that you're going to recognize them straight away is there's going to be pluses and minuses. Okay, now what's interesting is the way in which this question has been phrased. The part that is an equation is the second part. It says show that this thing equals that thing. Okay, and remember that previously I told you that when it's a show that, that is very much not an equation. Okay, so I'm calling the, the title of this lesson equations and then I'm saying that the first thing is not an equation. Bear with me, this is an incredibly common question type. So first show that and hence, hence means use what you have just proven or acquired from the previous answer. Okay, it comes up quite a bit in quite a few topics. Then you need to solve. Okay, so here this part is the equation. So what I'm basically being told is that the first part, the show that, should really help me with the second part, which is which is the equation. Okay, with the show that I'm going to do my left hand side, right hand side format and I'm going to say my left hand side Definitely looks like the one that I need to be doing stuff with because otherwise it's just 17 times 2 to the x and that there's just nothing imaginative about that one. So let me just copy and paste that and then see what I can do to it to get it to look like the right hand side. Okay, so let me break up those exponents and then take out a common factor. Okay, so you can see that the 2 to the x needs to come out. Alright, that works. So now I'm going to have 2 to the x as my common factor. My leftovers are 5 plus 3 times 2 to the 2. Let's clean that up. It's 2 to the x and this is 5 plus 3 times 4, so 5 plus 12, which is 17. Okay, and hello, that equals exactly what they asked me for. So I'm going to say that equals the right-hand side. Okay, done. Or at least the show that part is done. Hence, solve that equals 68. Okay, but that is exactly the same thing. And I must use what I just proved. Okay, but I just proved this equals that. So I'm now going to do a replacement. I could just solve the equation but it would be such an extra waste of time and also give me no marks because I'm not going to get the same marks over again. The other thing is if you couldn't get this far, say you had left this question till last in an exam and you actually didn't know how to get the proof, this bit here on the left, you could just solve the equation using the replacement. Okay, so whenever there's a hence, you're always allowed to use the thing you were supposed to have been able to prove in, in the next phase. It's CA marking. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is replace my 5 times 2 to the x, that whole thing. I'm going to replace it with 17 times 2 to the x. And I'm going to say that equals 68. Okay, now I need the 2 to the x by itself. I must isolate the thing with the exponent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides by 17. And 68 does divide by 17. It goes, 17 goes into 68 four times, that bit I did on the calculator. And then of course this part's really straightforward. 2 to the x equals 2 to the 2, so x equals 2. Okay, so there's a lot in this question in terms of exam technique understanding the question type and I'd really like you to be familiar with this kind of question because they do just occur so often. Alright, our next one has got a third in it and I need to think about whether or not to change the third into a, a fraction, into a, a base with a fraction in an exponent and I'm thinking that will go 2 to the 2, root 3, will be 3 to the half, and then I'm seeing a 3 to the something there. 
So it definitely feels like I should change it because otherwise I'm stuck with a third and nothing to do with it. Okay, let's change the 9 into 3 to the 2. My reason is there's another base 3 there. Okay, if everything had a base 9, I wouldn't bother changing it because it'll be the same base. But in this case, I can see it's going to go somewhere. And again, it's imagining the next phase to make sure that you know that you're going in the right direction. Okay, this one I'm going to leave as 3 to the 2x plus 1. And then I'm thinking about changing the 4 into a 2 to the 2. And I'm wondering and I'm not sure. And if I'm not sure, I can just do it at another stage. So let's just make that 4 times 3 to the half. Let me focus on the 3's for now. Okay, so this is 3 to the 2x. This is 3 to the 2x plus 1. I hope you can see there's a common factor lurking in there. And I can't really go any further with that one just yet. Alright, so breaking that up if you need to. You may realize you can just take out a 3 to the 2x straight away. But if you are ever uncertain about what you need to then put in brackets afterwards, then please just do these steps that I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to take out a 3 to the 2x. I'm left with 1 plus 3. Okay, that's 4. Hmm, just as well I didn't actually change the 4 on the right-hand side, or I'd have added extra steps for myself. The 3 to the half is so awkward, it's still going nowhere. Okay, but it's, it's all right for now. Um, that's obviously going to be times 4, and this is also times 4, right? Okay, so I can divide both sides by 4. Let me just show that step so we don't get lost in the detail. That means I'm left with 3 to the 2x equals 3 to the half. Okay, and from there it's really easy. From there it is uh, the 2x equals a half, which means the x equals a half divided by 2, so a quarter. All right, this one is going to require you to recognize something that you've done really many, many times before, but now needs to be applied into an incredibly different context. So the first issue uh, that tells you you're going to have to do something that you've never done before is that this looks completely impossible, right? So you've got 3 to the 2x, then you've got 3 to the x, and you've got a 6 and a 27, and it just doesn't go anywhere. Like you can see, you can hopefully imagine that even if I make this 3 to the 3, I can't take out anything, there's no common factor. And what you need to recognize, this is going to be a quadratic equation. Okay, which comes from this three term expression being a quadratic trinomial. Okay, so how am I recognizing that? What would be the criteria? Okay, first of all, there is a 3, three to the x, and the other thing with the exponent is 3 to the 2x. Check this out. Let me take the smaller one, the 3 to the x, and let me test out what happens when I square it. If I square 3 to the x, I get 3 to the 2x. Okay, I get this one, which means this is the square of that one. So the substitution method, which you are welcome to show in your calculations in an exam, or you don't have to. Um, the substitution method we, we used to refer to as the k method uh, because k is just not used in exponents, so therefore we can substitute out using a new variable of k. I'm going to say let k equal 3 to the x. Okay, the smaller one. Right, watch what I can do now. Now I can say, let me sub in k for everything that was 3 to the x over here. But we agreed that 3 to the 2x was just 3 to the x that got squared, right? So that means 3 to the 2x is k squared, okay? Then I've got k squared plus 6 times 3 to the x, but 3 to the x was k, so it's just 6k 
minus 27 equals 0. So I've subbed out the 3 to the x with a k, and now this is an ordinary quadratic equation to a point, okay, until I've got to sub back again. So this is a nice easy one where you need factors of 27 that subtract to give me 6, okay, so it'll be 9 and 3. They are different, the biggest one is positive, okay, this was a straightforward at this point, okay, and this means that I've now got it into a factorized form, okay. When I get my substitution into the two brackets, now it is the time to go and sub back, okay. Now you can do the, all of these stages, you can show them in the main body of your uh, solving of equation, you're welcome to do that. I just do it as a sidebar to create a cognitive separation for you so that you're aware like it's an extra step, it's a whole separate thing. Okay, so I can put this back, but my k was actually 3 to the x. So that means that k plus 9 is actually 3 to the x plus 9. And k minus 3 is actually 3 to the x minus 3. And that equals 0. Gosh, does that look even harder? Well, not necessarily, because remember that when you've got two brackets and you multiply them and you equate them to 0, it's just that old zero factor rule, so that means 3 to the x plus 9 equals 0, or 3 to the x minus 3 equals 0, or you can skip this step and go straight to this one. 3 to the x equals negative 9. Okay, problem with that one, but we'll come back to it. Or 3 to the x equals 3. That I can do. This I can do, because that's just 3 to the 1, right? So x equals 1. Fantastic. What's the problem here? And we're going to deal with this later as well. 3 to the x can't be negative 9. Because it doesn't matter what the power is. If this was a negative 1, it would be 3 to the negative 1, which would be 1 over 3. It would never give me a negative number. And this is something that you're going to now need to start recognizing as impossible. Okay, You can never have an exponent with a variable that gives you a negative answer. So you will always strike through this kind of answer because you need to recognize that it can't exist. Okay, so the principle here is a variable in the exponent cannot give you an answer that is negative. Okay, cannot give you an answer that is less than zero.